Great shot high above the big A. The Angels and the Texas Rangers getting ready to wrap up this four game series. The Angels trying to salvage the finale here tonight. It's been a tough go through the first three games. The Angels, as a matter of fact, have a five game losing streak. And with that five game losing streak, the Halos now find themselves seven back of the Texas Rangers. Hi, everybody. From inside the Big A, we welcome you back to Angels Baseball here on Fox Sports West. I'm Victor Rojas along with my partner, Mark Gubza. We'll talk about the offense and its struggles a little bit later on, but tonight we're talking about pitching. Urban Santana last night threw the ball exceptionally well. Unfortunately for him, Ian Kinsler got a two-out, two-strike base hit, and that was the difference in the game. Tonight, it's the ace, Jared Weaver. Well, the big thing, Victor, you got Jared Weaver, who's pitched extremely well against the Rangers at home. 7-0 career mark, 7-1 overall at home during the season this year with a great year of eight earned runs last time out 10 earned runs in his previous 10 starts but look for him to get back to command that fastball that's the thing he said got away from command of his fastball change up curveball slider change in speed on all those pitches but commanding the fastball in the strike zone so important for him yeah, jerry trying to bounce back after that very rough start he is opposed by a veteran the right hander colby lewis from bakersfield california in the angels office trying to figure him out we're just about ready for baseball here at the big a so sit back and relax we'll have lineups and first pitch for you when we return Hyundai Assurance trade-in value guarantee. See your Hyundai dealer for details. By CarMax, now more than ever the smart choice is CarMax. And by Powerade Ion 4, focus, hustle, hydrate, believe. 
Great blimp shot high above the big A here. The Angels trying to kind of figure things out against the Texas Rangers. You thought you were in control yesterday until things blew up in that eighth inning. But you know what? Today is another day. You pick up a victory today. You're six back, and you still have six games left to play against Texas after tonight. This is the lineup that Ron Washington is running out there this evening. Texas 20 games over 500. Have Ian Kinsler leading things off at second. Elvis Andrews is at shortstop. Josh Hamilton, the DH tonight, originally slated to play in center field, but he moves to the DH spot. Michael Young is a cleanup hitter at third. Nelson Cruz is in right. Mike Napoli was scheduled to be the DH. He is at first base. Mitch Moreland was a scratch, and David Murphy will play left. Jorvi Torial, but catching an Andy Chavez is in center field. He will bat tonight. Taking on Jared Weaver with a 14-6 and six mark and a 2.13 earned run average. Yeah, Jared looking to bounce back. We mentioned that in the opening as far as his fastball command. Worked on that a lot in between starts. Had his normal bullpen session, then had his bullpen session the next day to refine that fastball command. His change-up curveball slider. Outstanding. Plus his ability to change speeds off all of his pitches no matter what point of the, in the count. It is for him. That's why he's so effective and also very good as far as pickoffs. For six pickoffs, quick to the plate, negates the running game. That's a big part of the Rangers' offense. This will be the fourth start for Jared against Texas this year. The first coming on April the 20th, a complete game victory at Texas. He took a loss at Texas in May and then picked up a win on July 21st here, a one nothing victory for the Halos. First pitch to Ian Kinsler is a fastball that is in there for a strike. Kinsler went one for five, and that one was a crucial one, a two RBI single. On a slider from Urban Santana, proved to be the game-winning hit. Takes another fastball for a strike, and it's quickly 0-2. Kinsler hitting 244 on the year. 18 home runs and 56 runs batted in. They foul tipped that fastball. And it's no balls and two strikes. Well, you wonder if Jared will go up a little higher in the strike zone. You see a hitter going and swinging at that pitch. Fastball here. Well, that's well, a pretty good, good pitch. pitch. <laughs> yeah. Talk about commanding your fastball. That ball may have been maybe a half an inch off the plate at that. That's, no. uh, that's not off the plate. No, that was a no. perfect spot. Lance Barksdale calling the balls and strikes. Here's the one, two. Down it in. Two balls, two strikes. The Angels did make a move today before the game, optioning Tyler Chadwood down to AAA Salt Lake, recalling catcher Hank Conger. Conger, as we understand it, in transit. 2-2, two, two, and that is pulled foul. Cal remains at two balls, two strikes. But that would lead us to believe that Jerome Williams, who made his Angels debut last night in relief, will more than likely get to start Sunday against Baltimore. Joel Pinier getting to start Saturday. Heron tomorrow night as Kinsler lines went over to Ibar. And there's the first down of the ball game. Let's take a look at the defense behind Jared Weaver tonight. Bobby Abreu is getting to start in left field. Peter Borges in center. Torrey Hunter is in right. Meister Asturis, Eric Kaibar, Howie Kendrick, and Mark Trumbo from third to first. And Jeff Mathis back behind the plate. And you mentioned Bobby Bray who getting that start in left field. One error so far this season. 18 start in left field. Big thing for him is just to be able to make that play in front of him. Peter Borges to be able to help him out on that ball. The left center field also. Vernon Wells getting the night off. Ran into the outfield wall pretty firmly last night. So getting the day off. Didn't even go up to swing this day to clear the body and clear the head. Andrews takes a strike. Yeah, Vernon saying that he felt fine. The neck is a little stiff, and that's what we saw his reaction after banging into the fence. He's reaching back to that neck area, but appears to be all right. Is likely available off the bench tonight as that pitch is down and in. It's one ball, one strike. Andrews last night 0 for 3 with a couple of walks. Hitting 275 with three home runs and 45 runs batted in. Fastball. One and two. Well, 
the early on you can see that Jerry Weaver is locating that fastball very well. We've seen a 93 mile an hour fastball a couple of 92 and spotting it wherever he wants so far. Certainly not the case in that last start against Toronto. The extra rest as that pitch is inside two and two. Four and two third innings against Toronto at the Rogers Center. Eight runs all earned. Allowed three home runs. Those eight earned runs matching a career high. Snapped a string of 15 consecutive quality starts. Breaking pitch down and in, or down and away, pardon me, and a full count. Josh Hamilton, the DH, is on deck. Here comes the 3 2. Andrews fouls it straight back. Andrews were pretty good numbers against we 359 career hitter against Jerry. We were one of the few guys in the lineup for the Rangers that have had some success. This one lined to the center field. And a two hour one out base hit puts a man on. And Andrews is a guy that you have to pay attention to. He has been on board in three of them. First four games in the first inning. The Angels not allowing Texas to score in the first inning for the first time last night. Instead, themselves taking a 2 0 lead in the bottom of the first inning, but that was it as far as the scoring until the Calvin Kendrick solo home run in the eighth. Josh Hamilton, five game hitting streak, went two for five last night. 306, 15 home runs, 68 runs batted in. Fouling back that first fastball. Sure has been very effective throwing Hamilton change ups and slow curve balls. And ahead of the count with a fastball. Jerry with I mentioned six pickoffs, five to first, one at second. Very quick move. Andrews will run 31 stolen bases good for fifth in the American League. Makes that pitch on the inside corner. And it's quickly 0 and 2. Texas taking game one on Monday by the final of 8 to 4. It took Tuesday's affair 7 3 and then last night the 4 3 victory. The Angels will stay at home after tonight's game to take on the Orioles for three off day on Monday and then the White Sox for two. Texas tonight after the game heads to Chicago to play the White Sox. Check swing. Nope. Off the bat. It's a foul ball. Hamilton kind of looking at Bartsdale as if that ball hit him on the hand. Yeah, like off right the off the knob of the bat. Yeah. He tried to sell it though. When you're behind 0-2, you always try to do that as a hitter. So an 0-2 count. Andrews over at first with a pretty good lead. One out here in the first. Kinsler line out. Andrews with a base hit to center. Elvis takes off. The pitch is down and in. Dug out by Mathis. The throw is not in time. Stolen base for Elvis Andrews. His 32nd of the year. And a man in scoring position for Texas. And he gets along thinking the Jerry was going to throw something off speed. Picked the right pitch. Mathis did a nice job of scooping that breaking ball in the dirt. And quick transfer and throw. But Andrews got it that foot in there before the tag was applied. Rangers last night 4 for 15 with men in scoring position. In the series 10 for 37. It's a 270 batting average. The one two swing and a miss down goes Hamilton two outs and you know it really stands out about that number you know, I said 10 for 37 now 10 for 38. The Angels in the series comparatively speaking have had 20 less opportunities with men in the scoring position the Halos four for 17 in the entire series and that has been the, the toughest thing 
on the offensive side is getting guys in a scoring position, number one, and when they're there, he's getting them in. Exactly. And in Texas, you mentioned all those opportunities working the count, fighting off some tough pitches. Speaking of tough pitches, that was a nasty curveball that, that Jared got Hamilton to swing over. There's no need to get emotional over. Yeah, it's it was okay. a good pitch. It was a really, it it was was a really, really good, good pitch. pitch. It's good to see him have that curveball back. Do you need a hanky? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your concern. <laughs> Michael Young with an 0-1 <laughs> count with two outs here. And Andrew standing at second base. This one pulled toward the hole. Ibar dives, knocks it down, has no play, but keeps Andrews at third base. And Michael Young with yet another base hit in this series. Great defensive play by Ibar. I think he's all right. It looked like he bent his hand back when he made that play with his glove. What I did, it was real quick, but the bottom line is you prevent a run. So good as far as his instinct. He knows he can't get up and make that throw across the first base. He was hoping that Andrews drifted around third. Final line saved and prevented a run right there. First and third, two outs for Nelson Cruz. That's the tenth hit that Michael Young has picked up in this four-game series. 169th on the year. Nelson Cruz takes a strike. Cruz has himself a Six game hitting streak went one for four yesterday hitting 266 26 home runs 77 runs batted in Breaking pitch in the dirt Even to count of one ball one strike And I know we've talked about it a little bit just even mentioning the the situational hitting in this series between the two teams from a pitcher standpoint a starters mentality it's there I mean that thought process is there having to throw up goose eggs there's no doubt and you're more apt not to challenge hitters middle part of the plate good breaking pitch down and away and it's one and two and his mechanics are so fluid when it comes to that breaking ball it keeps that front shoulder in long enough he, yes he throws across his body with great deception but he gets his arm in the proper arm slot each time to deliver that curveball. Upstairs, two and two. Twenty five pitch first inning for Jared Weaver. Urban last night north of 120 pitches. And the 2 2. Cruz fouls it back. Tell you what, Urban battled as well as I've ever seen a pitcher have to battle there with the base loaded. No S to a 3 2 slider. Toriaba get him looking and strikes out Chavez after that. And Kinzer fell out off a bunch of good pitches and even got the base hit on a tough slider to break that game open. Breaking pitch just outside. A full counter with two outs. Michael Young will be off of the pitch. So Napoli on deck. It's 3 2. Cruz off the end of the bat, rolls it foul. So we'll reset and do it again. Jared in those four and two thirds in Toronto through 94 pitches. First start of the year in which he was just below the century mark. And pitches thrown in a game. Cruz strikes out, swinging second strike out of the inning for Weaver. And the top of the first comes to an end. It's Duras Kendrick and a brave to face Colby Lewis with no score when we return.
Sturz line up the Angels at 65 at 59. Seven back in Texas. Have Meister Sturz leading things off. At third base, Howie Kendrick is at second. Bobby Abreu gets a start in left field. Torrey Hunter with a 15-game hitting streak. It's a cleanup hitter in right. Mark Trumbo in first. Russell Brannion gets a start at DH as Peter Borges is in center, batting seventh. Eric Ibar will bat eighth and play shortstop. And Jeff Mathis will do the catching and bat ninth. Taking on a 31-year-old from Bakersfield, California. Went to high school there, went to junior college there, and it looks like he's got some family members in the house. A resurgent major league career for Colby Lewis. Yeah, he's a guy with a pretty good fastball. He can spot it very well, 89 to 93, but generally settles in around that 89-90 range. Curve, slider, changeup, and a cut fastball. Delivers a first pitch strike to Meister Asturias, who went one for four last night. Hitting 272 on the year. Five home runs at 29 runs batted in. Breaking pitch is bounce foul. And it's one ball, two strikes. Lewis, a guy that will rack up strikeouts. 128 punch outs and 152 in two third innings this year. It's down and in. Two balls, two strikes. He also is a guy that gives up a lot of home runs. 28 home runs allowed this season. Doesn't waste a whole lot of time on the mound as Estera swings and misses, and down he goes for the first down. Let's take a look at the Rangers defensively. Murphy and left, Chavez and Santa Cruz in right. In the infield, it's young Andrews, Kinsler, and Napoli from third to first with Tori Alba doing the catching. And Mike Napoli getting that start at first. We saw him last year for the Angels getting some starts at first. More acclimated, one error so far in that position this season. The guy is very aggressive as far as trying to field. Round balls in the hole between first and second, so times off the base and has to make that throw to the pitcher covering the bag. Boy, how he's showing bunt there, not a bad idea. Kofi Lewis, a big guy, doesn't move that well. Michael Young, same over at third base, not as large as Lewis. Is how he pulls one in line right to Michael Young, and there are two outs. Boy, that ball was smoked. Good reactions by Young. Well, I'll tell you what, now he can take a deep breath because that ball was hit as hard as you can hit a baseball. Ball's past him when he makes that play. And right at him. Boy, how he hit that ball as hard as you can hit it, though. You got to think in terms of, okay, I've had a couple good swings in a row. A home run for Howie, and of course, that line drive right at third base. Bobby Bray steps up and looks at a fastball for a strike. Bobby had the night off last night with C.J. Wilson throwing the slab for Texas. Wilson went seven innings and picking up his 12th win. Abreu on Tuesday went one for four. That pitch is down low. It's one ball, one strike. Took something off, just missed off the plate. And Abreu with a good hitter's count of two balls and one strike. Bobby hitting 252, six home runs, 45 runs batted in. He fouls this one off the left. Mentioned earlier about Lance Barksdale calling the balls and strikes. Adrian Johnson, who started behind the plate in the series on Mondays at first, Ted Barrett, the crew chief at second, and Field and Colbreth is over at third. Two two pitch. Abreu shoots one in the air to deep right, but playable for Cruz as he curls around. And the Angels go down in order here in the first. One complete from the big A. We have no score.
Goodyear. Everything Goodyear has learned making tires that go the distance inspires what they roll into yours. It's our pleasure to welcome in former Angel, great second baseman, gold glove winner, and a longtime coach for the Angels, Bobby Knopp, kind enough to join us here in the booth. How you been, Bobby? I'm fine. Thank you. Yeah, how, what's it like to come back here and get a chance to throw out the ceremonial first pitch? Well, the, the, the ceremonial first pitch, obviously, is, you know, it's a thrill for me, but it was really a thrill for me because my daughter was with me and uh, my godson was the catcher, so uh, that part of it was really special. Nice. That was a good throw, too. Uh, <laughs> not from where I was. <laughs> I'd like to throw. I know that. <laughs> I was watching you before the game, and you walked over to the Rangers side of things. You said hello to, to Michael Young. Uh, do you like coming back to ballparks and getting a chance to see not only Angel players, but also kind of admire some of the guys you've seen on television and get a chance to, to say hi to them? Well, Michael Young is a very special uh, man to me because uh, he was a Toronto Blue Jay first draft choice uh, as a young man. And I had him in spring training when I was a coach at Toronto. So being able to say hello to him and, and, and tell him how much I appreciated what he's done for himself. And, and the business is a great thing. His career is kind of uh, taken off. Is he a guy that when you saw him at such a young age that you anticipated him becoming that good of a hitter using all, fee all the entire field? Well, I, th I think when you see a young player like Michael, you, you say, yes, he, he's really got a chance to be in the big leagues. But, you know, that that's entirely up to that particular person. But Michael had a presence and being around major league players yourself with your father mm -hmm. and yourself mark uh, you know there's a presence among major league players they just they have it yeah well, well bobby you were a great second baseman and michael young's played so many different positions how difficult would it that have been to play say 120 games a second 120 at short 120 plus a third is it difficult for you know just the footwork itself to make different positions like that you know, that's, that's really why he's a very, very special player, Mark. He, he's been able to do that uh, at this level. And what many people don't understand is when you go flip-flop on the other side of the diamond, the ball looks completely different to you coming off the bat. And Michael's been able to handle that uh, under not only that stress, but the... But the stress of he's, he's always going to be traded someplace or he's going, going to right. go someplace else or, hey, how about trying this position this year or that position this year? And I, I think he's a phenomenal athlete. Or, or not being asked at all and just being told, hey, hey you're yeah. going to be playing this position this year. Never, well, never a fun <laughs> never a fun scenario, I would imagine. Now, who did you like playing behind defensively as far as a pitcher that would, would take the mound for you no matter where you were in your career as far as defensively how you, you get yourself in good position to make a play? Well, I, I can tell you two pitchers that I, I played with with the Angels um, when I first came up. And one was Dean Chance. And it wasn't so much because Dino uh, knew where he was going to throw the ball. I mean, he obviously had good control. But he had, he was so tenacious. He, he just he was not going to get beat. Mm -hmm. And that, that was his mindset. And the other pitcher was Freddie Newman. Freddie Newman was completely different than, than Dean. He was a sinker ball pitcher. And along with Bob Rogers, our catcher, who handled Freddie tremendously well, you knew when Freddie threw the ball that he was going to throw it where he said he was going to throw it, and you could play accordingly. i got, I got to ask you about Dean Chance because I know Gooby is his favorite angel of all time, favorite pitcher of all time, so it appears. But when you look at his numbers, do you look at Dean Chance and say that he was underappreciated because that guy had unbelievable stuff year in and year out, it seemed? I don't know if he was underappreciated by his teammates. But, <laughs> but from a grand scale uh, standpoint. Know, he, he was one of those pitchers that he'd come to the clubhouse and he'd say, get me one run, guys, and that, that's all I'm going to need. And he pretty much was that way. And he, he was fearless on the mound and... He was going to control that that strike zone, and you, if you tried to uh, dominate him as a hitter, you better step on some eggshells once in a while because he wasn't afraid to come inside. He's from the Gibson Drysdale School. Uh, I, you know, I, 
I think baseball was that way many general, years ago, yeah. you know, and it was expected. Tori Alba grounding this one to short. Looks like Jared Weaver has himself a 1-2-3 inning, and he does. Bobby, it's been a long time since I've seen you. Great seeing you. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. You, Enjoy the rest Bobby. of the night. Hey, way to get us a 1-2-3 nice inning, nice too. Nice Good job. We head to the bottom of the second here at the Big A. We are still scoreless. Inning. We start at the bottom of the second with no score. Colby Lewis to face Torrey Hunter, Mark Trumbo, and Russell Brainian. Our thanks again to, to Bobby Knopp. Spent a lot of time with Bobby in the 80s. He didn't give me much grief. He didn't make me look for the key to the batter's box or the bucket of steam. <laughs> that is so beautiful. The, bo the box of curveballs. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah, that's a good one. The other guys, on the other hand, there, there was a few. <laughs> I could imagine. Willie Frazier comes to mind. <laughs> Torrey swings and misses there, and it's no balls and yeah, two strikes. Yeah, I can imagine Willie doing that. They got my brother once in Kansas City. Running <laughs> running from bullpen to bullpen. Quisenberry apparently was involved, too. <laughs> looking for the key to the, key to the batter's, batter's box. box. Yeah, It's very elusive. Yeah. Torrey, a defensive swing there, bounces one over to Kinsler, and he is retired for the first out to start the second inning. Pets follow the Angels on FoxSportsWest.com slash Angels. Be sure to vote for the Angels poll question. And the question is, how good is that sunset? Beautiful. Now, who should be the Angels' primary leadoff hitter? Eric Ivar, Meister, Asturias, Peter Borges. This is taking that sunset. Good look out toward Palos Verdes. Something that I would see, like, uh, that you would kind of send over to me in an email saying I'd like. Yes. Long, slow walks on the beach. Yes, no question. <laughs> Trumbo with a one ball, no strike count. <laughs> two for four last night with a double and an RBI, hitting 256 on the year. 22 home runs, 66. Runs bad it is. That pitch apparently caught uh, somewhere near the inside corner of the strike zone. And it is one and one. Little chopper foul. It's one ball, two strikes. You're not going to get choked up again like you did with Weaver's first strike. Well, out you know, it, Jared had a little tough game last time out. It was emotional for me when he got that strikeout. His fastball command was there, and then his curveball. Yep. It was difficult. I hear I've recovered. If you're a man of the people, Trumbo fouls this one back. I might not have recovered on that one, though. <laughs> I think that was more lasered in on Dave Barnett, the voice of the Texas Rangers on TV. He's trying to ruin the sunset on that one back at us.
Here's the one-two again. That's up and in. Two balls, two strikes. California natives facing each other. Kobe Lewis going up at Bakersfield. It's North Bakersfield High School. Bakersfield Juco. And a supplemental first round pick by Texas in 1999. 2 2. Chumbo gets jammed and blocks it out toward left. Murphy came in and now turns around and heads back. Makes the catch for out number two. We'll take a look at our Hyundai key to the game. I'm going. 80s hairband for you for sure here, Victor. It'll poise it. Nothing but a good time. Just relax at the plate. Don't try to do too much. Simplify your approach. Relax in the field. We see some guys trying to do too much with the glove also. And of course, same thing on the mound. Get some quick outs. Jared had a quick inning, last inning. Just go out there and have a good time and don't press. Poison, huh? Yeah. I thought you'd go unskinny Bob. <laughs> Here's Russell Brand. I think I used that hours. earlier. Right? That's did why you? I did. Or if you use that one, I completely miss it. As Russell takes a strike. I love poison. The band. Brandon takes that pitch up and in. Russell getting to start at DH, hitting 193, three home runs, and nine runs batted in. He's also picked up a couple of doubles. Down and away. Two balls and one strike. It's the 31st game for Brandon with the Angels. 11 for 57. As a pinch hitter, three for eight. Two home runs and five runs batted in. 2 1 pitch. Foul back. It's two and two. Outside, full count. You know, Russell's getting locked in, though. Three for his last seven. Two home runs, five RBI. Breaking pitch. They wanted to check at 30. Did not go. A two-out walk. The Angels get their first base runner of the night. Comes via the free pass, and that'll bring up Peter Borges. Borges went one for three last night with a triple, his ninth of the year. He's tied atop the American League leaderboard in that category with Curtis Granderson. Been swinging the bat better of late, six for his last 15 of the last four games. One ball, no strikes. One strikeout, one walk for Colby Lewis. The guy whom Texas signed after he spent a couple of seasons with the Hiroshima Carp in Japan. Kind of a very friendly two year deal with an option. And Borges pulls this one past Michael Young to the left field. Brandon will stop at second. The Angels have their first hit. We've got two on and two outs, and Eric Ibar coming to the plate. Another good swing by Peter Borges. Now five for 12 in the series against Texas. He's doing his part as far as creating opportunities to score some runs. That ball by Michael Young at third base. And the key for Eric Ibar here is not chase pitches out of the strike zone. Get patient enough where you can get a fastball and drive it. And you wonder if Colby Lewis will come right with that break of pitch down and in. That's what a number of pitches have done against Eric of late. Ibar went 0 for 3 yesterday. 3 for 10 in this series. 260 average. 7 home runs, 43 runs out of it. Takes a slow breaking pitch for a strike. Halos were limited in their opportunities last night with men in scoring position 0 for 4. We mentioned back to the first inning 4 for 17 overall in the series. Ibar pulls this one to the right side. Kinsler deep to his left hand to his spin move. And 
Ibar is thrown out to end the inning. No runs, one hit, and the Halos leave two on. Two complete, still scoreless. And the Coors Light cold zone. All you got to ask yourself is a mountain blue. Then you know it's ice cold. Oh, yes. Andy Chavez will lead things off here against Jared Weaver coming off a one, two, three. Second. Chavez takes a strike. Weaver picked up his two strikeouts in the first inning. Got a fly ball on a couple of ground outs in the second. Shattered the bat of David Murphy, too. Good running fastball. Count even on Chavez at one and one. Andy went one for four yesterday. Was not scheduled to play tonight. Last minute change. Mitch Moreland scratched from the game. We haven't heard a reason as to why Moreland was taken out. But Murphy moved up in the order to the seventh spot. Napoli was going to be the DH. Getting to start at first base and Chavez put in the lineup in center. Here comes the one two. Chavez a swing and a miss down he goes for round number one. Well, he's been outstanding with location of that fastball so far. Fans, the next Wells Fargo Big Bang Friday is tomorrow night when the Halos take on the Baltimore Orioles at 7.05. Be sure to purchase your tickets at the Angel Stadium ticket office or online at angels.com. Dan Heron going for the Angels tomorrow. Jojo Reyes, former Toronto Blue Jay. Left-hander is going for Baltimore. Pinheiro is going Saturday against former Ranger Tommy Hunter. And then we believe it's going to be Jerome Williams on Sunday. Against their TBD. So it's TBD versus TBD on Sunday. There's Jerome. Made his Angels debut last night. That big ground ball double play through the inning without allowing a run. Kinsler takes that pitch outside, two and one. Pops this one up. Trumbo and Mathis near the dugout. It's Mark Trumbo with the call. Well, Kinsler doesn't get cheated on his swing. Never has. A lot of pop-ups. But he aggressively attacks the baseball. Wasn't real happy with the fact he got underneath that pitch to pop it up to Mark Trumbo. He had that big at bat last night just to 
excellent at bat fighting off some tough pitches in that base hit against Urban Santana. Gave him a two run lead. Elvis Andrews takes a fastball outside for ball one. Andrews had a base hit to center field in his first inning at bats. He's one for one. Even to count there. Jared threw 29 pitches in the first inning, 14 in the second. Trying to have an economical third. This will be his 55th pitch of the night. It's just off the plate. Certainly not getting that call as it goes to three balls and a strike. And went with a four seam fastball. Look, it had a good chance of catching the corner, which it did. Pulls it foul, full count. Especially when you're hitting your spots like that. Most times you're going to get that call, especially when it is on the corner. Most umpires generally will call outside pitches. Inside, you don't necessarily get that as much, but certainly on the outside corner, you're going to get that call. Boy, it goes inside out toward the right field corner, going for extra bases. Torrey cuts it off. Andrews will stop at second. Especially after the a couple of slip and slides that he's had going around second base. A two out double for Andrews and that'll bring up Josh Hamilton. We're now 16 for 41 against Weave. Inside out approach on that pitch inside. Punch it down in the right field corner for a double. And double number 19 on the season. Hamilton, a strikeout victim of the first. One of three for Weaver as the breaking pitch is lofted in the air to shallow center. Peter Borges coming on. That will end the inning. No runs. A two out double is stranded in scoring position. We head to the bottom of the third with no score. Up nine, one, and two. Mathis, Asturias, and Kendrick gets Colby Lewis. Sugar Rush starting to kick in. Halo seven back from Texas trying to pick up a game here tonight with a victory. He's talking about the, the upcoming schedule. 
And the what if scenarios as Mathis takes down and in for ball one. Jeff hitting 177. Two home runs, 17 runs batted in. But I mentioned Baltimore coming in for three. White Sox on the heels of that for two to wrap up this homestand. Jeff has a two ball, no strike count. Texas goes to Chicago to play the White Sox. Then they go home to take on the Boston Red Sox for four. And then they've got the Tampa Bay Rays, if I'm not mistaken. No, they've got us for three. Then the Tampa Bay Rays. For three, and then they go to Boston to take on the Red Sox for three more. Mathis swings through that one, and it's two balls and one strike. So an extremely tough stretch for the Rangers. The, the the question, obviously, that we've all been wondering is, can the Angels pick up a game tonight and then start taking care of business as they were doing so prior to that last road trip through New York and Toronto? Yeah, and that's the bottom line. If you get some offense. With this pitching staff, you have a chance to run off about five or six or seven wins in a row. Then you put pressure right back on the Rangers. But tonight is the game. Like Social's Club has to have. You have to have this game tonight. Mathis fouls it back, and it's 2-2. Two and, two. and not, not only does Texas go home and, and face those opponents, Boston for four, us for three, the Rays for three. Then they go on the road, Boston for three, and the Rays for three more. So it goes into September. So there is... An opportunity is just capitalizing and, and making the most of the opportunities the Angels are presented. As Mathis strikes out swinging for out number one. Here's the upcoming schedule for both. And of course, the last three games of the regular season played here at the Big A between these two teams. That's all you want is an opportunity. Those right. last three games of the season against the Rangers mean something. Have an opportunity. But if you play good baseball, you have a shot. Back to the top of the order now with my sisters at the plate. He pulls this one foul just in front of Alfredo. The stirs a strikeout victim to start the bottom of the first. One of two strikeouts for Colby Lewis. He's issued one walk and he's allowed one hit. That was the Peter Borges two out knock in the second. Popped up. Left side of the infield. Elvis Andrews. Makes the catch for out number two. So that'll bring up Howie Kendrick. Breaky pitch is in for a strike. Howie smoked one to Michael Young in the first inning. Almost took out the glove and the arm. Allowed out. That was by him even. Yeah. He made that play. And out nonetheless. So Howie is 0 for 1. Swinging to bat better of late. 2 for 4 last night with a couple of runs batted in on the heels of the 2 for 3 game he had Tuesday night. One one. Shoots this one out to right. Chasing Cruz back. Nelson still going back. And will make the catch just shy of the track. And the Angels go down in order for the second time tonight. Three in the books. Still scoreless.
Hamilton became the third American League batting champ in Rangers history. Who were the first two? Talked about one of them earlier tonight. Here's Michael Young swinging at the first pitch. Lofty went out to shallow center. Peter Borges makes the catch. Young had an infield base hit in the first inning. He's now one for two. You're seeing a, a slightly different approach for this Rangers lineup tonight than you'd had the first three games where they were a little bit more patient. Knowing and not wanting to get behind against Jared and then all of a sudden opening up the arsenal. Yeah, that's the exact point. They want to think in terms of they're going to get a fastball to first pitch and try to attack the fastball because they don't want it to deal with the slow curve, the change, or the slider. First pitch strike to Nelson Cruz who struck out to end the first innings. He's 0 for 1. Mentioned those 29 pitches he threw in the first. He threw 14 in the second, 15 in the third. So starting to get back in line. Oh, one pitch. Cruz takes that one just off the plate. And it's one and one. I like it, Weaver Fever. Two balls and one strike. Most frustrating thing for a starting pitcher, it would seem, is if you feel like you've got a good fastball, you feel like you have good location. It's a breaking pitch is cut on in this. But you're not getting the call on the side of the plate you really need to open up, especially against right-handed hitters, is making the adjustment to the game plan a little bit. But it doesn't appear like that call is going to be made no matter what. So you have to make an adjustment as much as you don't want to as a pitcher. That's why I always had a book on every single umpire when they were going to be behind the play. I knew which one was going to call the inside pitch, the outside pitch, whether it was going to be a low ball umpire, a high ball umpire, or would call the breaking pitches more often. You make adjustments to umpires just like you do to batters. Now you see the positioning for Barksdale really on the inside corner with the right handed batter at the plate. You would think, in theory, that it would be more difficult to call that outside corner, at least to get a better gauge of that outside corner. As Cruz lifts one out toward right, Torrey back a couple of steps, makes the catch, two outs. Hey, one of the most affordable ways to see the Angels play is with the JetBlue Friends and Family Pack. This deal includes four tickets, four hot dogs, and four sodas for only $44. The next Friends and Family Pack game is Sunday against the Orioles at 12.35. To purchase your tickets, visit the Angel Stadium ticket office or log on to angels.com slash funpack. Two fly ball outs for Weaver. There's Mike Napoli. He hit a fly ball to left to start the second. Four seam cut fastball for Weave on the outside corner. Got the call that time around. Off speed, grounded to short. Ibar has it. It's a one, two, three inning for Jared, his second of the night. We hit at the bottom of the four. Still scoreless.
by your local Mazda dealers. And by Jack of the Box. Come try the new Jumbo Breakfast Platter for just $2.99 plus tax at participating restaurants. Scoreless here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Bobby Abreu, Tori Hunter, Mark Trumbo. That's three, four, and five for the Angels against Colby Lewis, who has struck out two and walked one. And allowed one base hit. Bobby hit a fly ball to right field to end the first inning, so he's 0 for 1. Showing Bunt takes a strike into the knees. No runs, three hits, three left on for Texas. No runs, one hit, two left on for the Angels. Both of those guys reaching into second inning. Breaking pitch fouled off to the left. And a no ball, two strike count. Bobby getting the start out in left field. Vernon Wells with the night off. Jack swinging the breaking ball. Nope. Barksdale rings him up on the breaking ball. Down goes Abreu. And there's the first out. Third strike out of the night. And Bobby hasn't moved, and I don't think Lance Barksdale likes that. Pretty close to crossing the plate. Big curveball by Colby Lewis. Strike at number three. Torrey's up. Went over for his 0 for 1 with a ground ball to second. Swinging through the fastball. Boy, he pulled off that fastball there. It was 91 mile an hour fastball. Relatively straight fastball. Thinks so in terms of hitting that ball to right center field. Missed off the plate. One ball, one strike. Torrey with a 15 game hitting streak. With this one for four performance last night, hitting 429 at the start of the night. In the month of August, that pitch is down low. That's tops in Major League Baseball. Two one pitch pulls off the breaking ball. And it's two and two, and that's for the better part of the month of August. It's something we really haven't seen Tory do a whole lot. Maybe once on occasion during the at bat, but then go back to making contact, getting on base. Yeah, especially now with two strikes, got to think in terms of he's going to try to go away, whether it's a breaking pitch or a fastball. Fouls this one back over the screen, so the count's still at two and two. Torrey's career high as far as hitting streak is concerned. 23 games. That was back in 07. Another foul ball back. Still two balls, two strikes. And a pretty good swing at that fastball. on that fastball and he would like to get that pitch once again goes down swinging on the breaking pitch two outs back to back strikeouts for Lewis who now has four on the night we've seen two pitchers tonight that can change speeds a different look both have four quality pitches both curve sliders change ups and fastballs and able to cut the fastball and sink the fastball too. Well, Lewis figured things out while in Japan in 2008 and 2009. Prior to last year, he'd been in the big leagues since 07. That was with the Oakland A's. Trumbo takes a strike. Didn't, didn't fare well with Oakland. Known to record a 645 ERA. Went to Japan, worked on things. Texas signed him to a two year deal with an option. Which they will probably exercise at the end of the year. 
Went off a, had a terrific season for him last year. Strumbo hits that one off the end of the bat. It's no balls, two strikes. 12 game winner last year with a 3.72 ERA. An 11 and an 8 record this year. And it's nothing fancy, just throwing strikes, movement. Trouble fouls this one back, and it's still 0 and 2. Yeah, it's not overpowering. A relatively straight fastball when he doesn't try to sink it or cut the fastball, but spotting it very well. 92 mile an hour fastball right on the outside corner at the knees. Very difficult pitch to hit well. Best fastball has been a 92 mile an hour fastball. He's missing a good slow curveball at 73. Big difference, 19 mile an hour differential between that slow curve and his fastball. Count even now, two balls, two strikes. Russell Brandon on deck, two outs here in the fourth. The Rangers have had two opportunities with men in scoring position. Weaver has limited those. The Angels have had one opportunity. That was in the second inning. Outside, full count. Barksdale, at least, has been consistent with that outside corner to right handers. Three two swing and a miss. Kobe Lewis has struck out the side Four complete here at the big A. We are still scoreless. of the angels and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the angels top of the fifth thing and a curveball drops in for a strike against david murphy with no score bottom third of the order due up for texas murphy tori alba and chavez Ground ball up the middle, off the mound. Howie has it, gets rid of it quickly, and Murphy is retired for the first down. Boy, off the bat, it seemed like that was destined to go into center field. Nice play by Howie. We'll go back to our AT&T trivia question for tonight. Josh Hamilton, last year's the American League MVP, third American League batting champion in Rangers history. Who were the first two 
One of them was Michael Young. That was an 05. Julio Franco, the first in 91. I probably helped him out on that one. Julio? Yeah. Did my part. Did well, he, get he, you? he could hit. No, not out of the ballpark, but he could hit a breaking pitch as well as any right handed batter I, I had seen at that point. Very good. At, you know, I, I finally figured him out. Just like Manning Ramirez, there was a spot down and in with a sinking fastball you can get. A ground ball out against it, but if it was something away, it was going to be hit hard up the middle of the right center field. The amazing thing about Julio was the strength that he had later on in his career. He came up with the Phillies, yeah, to to whip that big bat around, especially from the the starting position that he had. I mean, those hands were up around the the helmet area, and he kept that same stance through his entire career, even when he was playing what in his mid 40s. Well, Julio Franco hit 380 against you. Wow. That's domination. Here's the one two pitch. Lined into center field, and it's a one out base hit on a one two count. Toriyama is on board. So, told you I helped him win the battle. Don title. Mattingly, Wade Boggs, and then Julio Franco in the career averages against you. Yep. Glad you were able to get that quickly. That was nice. And the most hits of anyone ever against you. I didn't look it up. Most hits I ever gave up was against Julio Franco for real. Allegedly. Yeah, that's what I'm being told. You didn't know that? I didn't know that from who I knew Manningly, but so did Julio didn't hit a home run against me, so I didn't really care. Here's Andy Ch <laughs> Andy Chavez hits a breaking ball for a strike. <laughs> At the end of the day, that's that's, that's all that matters. Yeah. So he was a good breaking ball hitter. Yeah. But then I kept trying to throw a breaking ball away and he would a rocket up the middle. Yeah, I didn't figure it out till later on, so I think it about like once or twice. Gotcha. On fastballs down and in. Yeah, he would seem to be like a, a susceptible kind with that with that stance. Swing and a miss by Chavez. No balls, two strikes. Chavez a strikeout victim in the third. He got a lot of those hits when he's with Texas. A better infield to go through. Not in Cleveland though. I'll say that. Right. Yeah, it's like playing on AstroTurf. Texas. Not anymore though. They've got the no, that infield. infield grass is very, very thick. That's like a hybrid grass. 0 2 is down low. One ball, two strikes. But it, that ball used to just shoot through. And they, they tried, Texas for a while, tried signing sinker ball pitchers. But the problem is it didn't really matter with how a, quick that infield was. It was a putting green. Yeah. But all of a sudden, the last couple of years, they've done a terrific job at really slowing things down with that grass in the infield and that's why you see their their starting pitching staff in general has been much more effective because you can get it out on the ground now Chavez fouls it off to the left and it's still one and two you almost have to put it down on the ground if you're a pitcher in that ballpark because anything out toward right or right center field that south wind is blowing yeah great carry to that part of the field Quick throw to first, Toriyama back. Takes a fastball for a called strike three. There's that no seam fastball that catches the inside quarter. That is out number two. What good movement. You mentioned that no seam fastball. Good late movement below the strike zone, but he will call that part of the plate on the inside corner because you, you're right, Victor. He's set up in that spot to be able to see that pitch much better than the pitch away. And Sparksdale has been very consistent though with his strike zone. He hasn't varied from it at all. Kinsler swinging first pitch. Pops went up to shallow right. Howie going out. Torrey calls him off. That will end the inning. A one out base hit by Jorvin Torriado stranded at first base. We head to the bottom of the fifth. Still with no score.
Tires that go the distance inspires what they roll into yours. Bottom of the fifth, no score. Colby Lewis coming off an inning in which he struck out the side. He's got five punch outs tonight, one walk. The Halos have managed one hit. Peter Borges with a two out single in the second. Brandon leading things off here, Borges to follow. As the breaking ball is outside, Ibar would bat third. Russell drew a walk in the second inning, so no official at bat for him. Texas overshifts. Andrews, the shortstop, almost behind the bag at second. Little pop up on the third base side. Michael Young and Yorvi Toriaba. It's Toriaba, the catcher, making the basket catch for the first out. This week on, on Fox Saturday Baseball, Albert Pujols leads the Cardinals into Chicago to battle the Cubs in a showdown between bitter division rivals. This week's telecast of Fox Saturday Baseball begins at 1 p.m. Pacific only on Fox. I see Peter Board just maybe attempt a bunt here. Force Colby Lewis to get off the mound. Force Michael Young to get, come in a little closer also. Pitch missed outside. Borges had a base hit past Michael Young in the second inning. It was stranded at first. See the overall numbers in the month of August for him at 333. Two balls and no strikes. <laughs> Lewis has thrown 63 pitches. 40 have been strikes. Popped up down the right field line. Nelson Cruz coming on. Napoli going out. Nobody's going to get this one. So a 2 1 count now. Well, you mentioned about Peter possibly thinking about dropping one down. We talked about it in the pregame show. We talked about it early on. When you've got people from the Rangers organization telling you, I don't know why teams don't bunt more often on Colby Lewis because he's just not very athletic. Pretty good indication that perhaps maybe you should try to. Yeah, make him uh, field his position. Why not? Especially, you know, when a guy's in such a rhythm that he's in right now, throwing a lot of strikes, all of his pitches, make him field the bunt. Get him out of his comfort zone. There's a bunt on the third base side. Put it in your pocket. That's an infield base hit. He was listening. Didn't hurt. There was a perfect bunt also down yeah, the line. The only guy that would have had a play on it was Michael Young. That's how slowly and how long it took for Colby Lewis to get over to the third base side. Second hit of the game for Borges. He's on board. You got to look for him to be taking off at some point here. Early on in the at bat with Ibar at the plate. So two hits tonight for Texas, or pardon me, for the Angels. Borges has both of them. One thing about Colby Lewis, though, he is very quick to the plate. Around 1 2 to 1 2 5 is times to the plate, which is above average. So he is quick. But still, you got to take that chance. Peter with 15 stolen bases has been caught six times. Ibar's 0 for 1. He grounded out to Kinsler to end the second inning. A bunt is bunted foul. And it's no balls and a strike. We see that slide step he uses. Learned to use a slide step while over in Japan. He's quicker to the plate. He's a big guy. The best way to do that is fall towards the plate on a slide step. Barely even picks the leg up, but he still is able to get his arm in a good motion because he keeps the front shoulder locked in there long enough to be able to utilize the slide step. Quick throw over there, and he throws it away. For the incidental contact, Borges is going to keep on going to throw. 
He's that, my friends, is speed. I mean, Kinzer got over there pretty quick. They back up Mike Napoli on that throw by Colby Lewis. Right off the end of the glove of Napoli, and even with the incidental contact, easily gets to third base. Well, there was no hesitation whatsoever for him. He looked back and saw where the ball was and knew he was going to get in there that easily. He's dashed from the Incredibles. <laughs> Infield in for Texas. The 101st air of the season for the Rangers. The one pitch. Ivar pulls a foul that cut her inside. And it's no balls, two strikes. O2 pitch. Ibar hooks it foul. It's another one that has cut fastballs inside off the plate. Really good pitching though by Lewis Gill to stay in on the hands. Now you have him set up for something potentially slow down and in. Hard slider, then he can go with the curveball. Now it's up to Eric to make sure he gets a good part of the bat on there to get this ball in the air. We're going to go elevate the fastball in. One ball, two strikes. One thing that Ibar has been really susceptible to because of his propensity to chase that pitch in off the plate here of late is that slow little breaking ball away from him. Which would work if there is a, the infield playing back and get a ground ball. It's not going to miss off speed pitch. Down he goes, two outs. That's the exact spot we've talked about. Eric Ibar having a tough time with down and in. And he chased it once again. Six strikeouts now for Colby Lewis. Two outs infield back at normal depth. Borges is still over third. Mathis, a strikeout victim himself in the third inning. He's 0 for 1. One ball, no strikes. A 1 0 pitch. It's not going to miss on the breaking ball, and it's 1 and 1. One ball, two strikes on Mathis. And Sturis on deck. Borges advancing to third on the pickoff attempt by Colby Lewis. And Jeff has got a piece of that one and found it back. Lewis getting ready to throw his 75th pitch of the night. The one two. Mathis goes down swinging. Back to back strikeouts from the Angels. Leave a man at third. The Boo Birds come out here at the big A. Through five, still scoreless.
happening now. It's time for the Coors Lake free scan. This is why Jerry Weaver has such an effective curveball. Here's the grip that he uses. Keeps that front shoulder in, gets on top of this curveball. Nasty break to it on top. Snaps it down. Josh Hamilton swings and misses. Well, you can see that great action on there. Again, as a hitter, you think because of the same arm slide as his fastball, but it's a breaking ball. Perfect location. No walks. Four punch outs for Jared so far. And that was our Coors Light free scan brought to you by Cross Brew Coors Light. Jared doing what he needs to do so far through five innings. Scoreless baseball, four hits allowed. Four strikeouts and no walks facing two, three, and four for Texas here. And Andrews takes a curveball for a strike, and Elvis Andrews goes back and has some words for Lance Barksdale. Andrews is two for two with a single and a double. The 0 1. Fastball for a strike, and it's 0 and 2. Jared's throwing first pitch strike to 18 of the first 20 batters he has faced. This is where you got to throw a pitch at that a baseball off the plate. You can see if Barksdale rings up Andrews. Breaking pitch, did he go? Nope. Adrian Johnson says he did not. In tight, two and two now. Full count. Hamilton on deck, Michael Young to follow after that. Golden opportunity for the Angels in the bottom of the fifth inning. Gifted a base runner at third base with one out because of the error by Colby Lewis and unable to get him home. 3-2, lifted in the air to shallow left center field. Ibar going out, still going out, can't get it. In and out of the gloves, and it falls in, and Andrews has his third hit of the game. Well, Ibar had to go a long, long way to try to make this play. Number 32, Just off the glove. About going out that far is the fact that, that ball, the way it was hit off the end of the bat, had a lot of spin to it, to it. So it's not one of those as an infielder. You're going back onto one particular spot. You're hoping the ball doesn't tail or hook off the bat. And that's where Eric had to kind of make the adjustment there at the last minute. Had to go in and out of his glove. So the leadoff man is on board. Quick throw, but then they almost got him. Well, that was a quick move by Jared that time around. Mentioned six pickoffs, five at first. Most times, Jared, with that pickoff, is holds the ball before he throws over. That was a quick move and almost got Andrews leaning. Andrews already with one stolen base tonight. That was in the first inning. His 32nd of the year. Hamilton, the guy at the plate, is 0 for 2. A strikeout victim in the first hit of fly ball to shallow center that ended the third inning. First pitch. Fastball is in for a strike. What a very important move here, too, for Jared. If he can hold the ball, step off the pitching rubber, then throw quickly to first, he might be able to get Andrews leaning. It looks like one of those guys that puts a lot of weight on that front leg, that right leg for him as a base runner. Pitch is inside to throw down. He's not in time. Hamilton with a one ball, one strike count. Jerry wants to know where that pitch was. That was a pretty good pitch inside. Eighty-eight pitches thrown by Jared tonight. Long first inning for him, but he's settled in nicely. Second through the fifth. Ball gets away from Trumbo, but not far enough for Andrews to advance.
So ball and a strike on Hamilton. Andrews with a pretty good lead at first. In the dirt. Andrews not going anywhere. Two balls and one strike. Well, if you look, you know, baseball over time, that dangerous inning after on the offensive side, you have a golden opportunity to score a run, to get a lead, and you don't do that. The opponent gets that momentum going, and then as a pitcher, you go right back out there and you figure, okay, I, I have a lead, and then all of a sudden there's no lead given to you. It's a little different feel for you. It comes a big inning for Weave in the club right now. Two one pitch. Hamilton pops it up. Left side of the infield. Asturias gets called off by Ivor. Makes the catch for the first down. Kids, the Angels take on the Orioles Sunday at 12.35. And all kids will receive a Vernon Wells Messenger Bank, courtesy of OC Parks, while supplies last. To purchase your tickets today, visit the Angel Stadium ticket office or log on to angels.com. By the way, that was great arm action on that all-speed pitch to Hamilton to get him out in front, the four-step pop-up to Eric Ibar. Good hitter's count, 2-1. You think in terms of a fastball all-speed yep. pitch, but it was his arm action itself that sold the pitch. Hamilton 0 for 3 now. Andrews still at first, one out. Here's Michael Young. The pitch just outside for ball one. Andrews bluffing over at first base as that pitch was being delivered. Young had a base hit, an infield hit in the first inning. Hit a fly ball to center in the fourth. Now Jared has him set up to do the exact same thing, step off the mound and then throw over the first base quickly. Pettis given some information to Andrews to see if there's anything that can tip that something Jared's doing as far as to throw over or when he's going home. One oh young skies went out to shallow left Abreu coming on two outs. Expanded the strike zone when after a high fastball. So two outs now with Andrew still at first. Here comes Nelson Cruz, the right fielder. Cruz over two, punched out to end the first inning. Hit a fly ball to Torrey Hunter in right field in the fourth. Weaver tonight, four strikeouts, no walks, five hits allowed. Pitch out, nothing's happening. One ball, no strikes. <laughs> Upstairs, two balls and no strikes. Two zero upstairs. Three balls and no strikes. Now he's behind the count. Three zero. 
Isaac Bruce won a 3-0 pitch last night. We'll be careful with location of this pitch for Jared. Refocus. There's a strike. How much as a starting pitcher, even as a reliever, does a, a, a pitch out, which is usually mandated from the dugout, to throw you off as far as your command? I mean, you give up the leadoff base hit, then you've gotten the next two guys, good control, good command, pitch out, and all of a sudden, it seems like you get out of sync a little bit. Yeah, well, bottom line is you're throwing a ball, so it's that muscle memory that your arm slide is staying the same exact spot as the pitch that you throw off the plate. So it takes you a pitch or two to a lot of times to get right back into your rhythm. You can see those next two pitches out there were the same, almost the same location. I mean, Jerry's doing a great job as far as not giving Andrews the same look. Kept him there with two outs. 3 1 pitch. Breaking ball is a strike. Full count. Cruz certainly doesn't like the call. And with a full boat, two outs, Andrews is going to be off of the pitch regardless now. Well, catch at the top of the strike zone. Napoli on deck. Tremble playing behind Andrews at first. Here's the payoff. Cruz strikes out, swinging, and certainly not happy with that two strike call. Drops the bat, flips the helmet. We hit to the bottom of the sixth inning. Still scoreless. Casino. Get your game on by El Pollo Loco. Try one of four new delicious flame grilled chicken burritos. For a limited time, they're only $5 each. El Pollo Loco. Feel the excellence. And by Time Warner Cable. Halos have the top of the order coming up here at the bottom of the sixth inning with no score. Is Sturis Kendrick and Abreu to face Colby Lewis? Meiser looks at a fastball for a strike as Sturis is 0 for 2. A strikeout victim in the first, popped out in the third. Seven punch outs for Lewis tonight. But off speed pitches down low. And it's one and one. Good idea with Napoli was playing back at first base to think about dropping one down. The 1 1. Fouled off the left, one and two. Lewis with one on, one walk issued, and only two hits allowed, both by Peter Borges. Base hit to left field in the second inning, a bunt single, with one out in the third. Pardon me, in the fifth. Boy, Colby Lewis can spot those pitches inside, outside, change the speed. Just like Jerry, we were both these guys tonight have been fantastic. Lifted out towards shallow right center field. Andy Chavez is there. One out. 
And now it's time for Coors Light Cold Hard Blast. Last night, Howie up in the eighth inning, gets a fastball, turns on in the left center field, gets it out of the ballpark for his ninth home run of the season. The line drive rate of Michael Young, his first at bat also. Kendrick 0 for 2 today with a line out and a fly ball to right. Takes the breaking ball for a strike. That one caught the outside corner. It's 0 and 2. They got two starters on the mound as that pitch is up and in. Don't waste a whole lot of time on the mound. Get the baseball, stay right there. And yeah, they don't move off that dirt of the mound. They move off the contact of the pitching rubber. Tells you they're aggressive and they're confident. Slow roller towards short. The ball changed direction on Andrews. He'll still throw out Howie Kendrick, round number two. So two up and two down, and that'll bring up Bobby Abreu. Bobby tonight with a fly to right and a strikeout. Bobby drills one out toward deep right center field. That ball's crushed. That one's got a chance off the top of the wall. Abreu on his way to second, and he is in there with a two-out double. Narrowly missing a solo home run, but he certainly gave it a ride in Bobby with his 21st double of the year. Well, he hit that ball so well, and Andy Chavez played that ball very well off the wall, got that throw in quickly. Fastball right down the heart of the place. Late, aggressive. I think he thought he had it. Well, didn't miss by a lot. Well, nope. he had to kick it into gear to be able to be in there. Kinzer was trying to sell it as if he wasn't going to be at the base. He spun around and almost was able to apply the tag as Bobby slid into second base. Boy, just missed. Breaking up this tie at zero. Two outs of man in scoring position. Torrey went around. He did, says Adrian Johnson. It's 0 and 1. Torrey 0 for 2 with a ground ball to second and a strikeout. Pops this one up on the first base side. Mike Napoli drifting over near the railing. That will end the inning. Two out double stranded at second base. Bruce it. Still no score.
Jared Weaver back out on the mound. 98 pitches thrown by Weaver. 65 for strikes. Five punch outs, no walks. And he has scattered five hits. And here in the seventh inning, he's scheduled to face Napoli, Murphy, and Tori Alba. Mike Napoli tonight, a fly ball to left and a ground ball to short. Takes a fastball for a strike. Six for 17 in this series. Evens a count of one ball, one strike. Vernon Wells is in left field now. Taking over for Bobby Abreu. Slow breaking pitch is fouled back. Go back to last night. The play is hit. Vernon going up against the fence there. They're smacking the neck of Gray and bothered him. Yeah, especially when he got a full extension trying to reach up with his glove. Still moving his neck around as much as possible to stay loose. Wells goes into the three spot of the order. And Bobby ends the game going one for three. Fastball high, two and two. A two out double by Abreu in the bottom of the sixth inning. Stranded in scoring position. Two, two. Boy, got him to reach on the off speed pitch. Fouls it back. Well, that was a great change up. Sure, now with 103 pitches. He can have a quick inning here. He may be able to go back out there for the eighth inning. Missing upstairs with the fastball and a full count. David Murphy, the left fielder, is on deck. Here's the 3 2. Napoli hits one high, deep to left. Wells is back, and Napoli has put the Rangers up by the score of 1 0. 20th home run of the season for Napoli. And it comes leading off the seventh. Fastball was up. Able to turn on that fastball, elevate it in the inner half of the plate. Breaking ball to Murphy is a called strike. Murphy's 0 for 2. Twice having grounded out. Takes the off speed pitch outside. It's one ball, one strike. Rolls over this one. Trumbo feed Weaver. Murphy is retired for the first down. Little contact there between Murphy and Weaver. It appears to be all right. First down of the inning is recorded. Your Vitorialba coming to the plate. As Weaves covering the base, looking to try to find the base. If he almost steps on his foot, looks like. Pitch, you want to get the inside part of the base. As he was going by the base, yeah. he ended up making contact. Breaking ball is down low. Torialba one for two, had a base hit in the fifth inning. Mike Napoli, a leadoff home run here in the seventh. Putting Texas up one to nothing. Three and zero. Bobby Casavo 
loosening now for the Angels. Jared at 111 pitches. And he walked a first walk issued. Puts a man on with one out. And the Chavez coming to the plate. And it goes back to what we were talking about earlier that the mindset of having to throw up zeros on the board with the offense that continues to struggle even with presented opportunities unable to capitalize on them. Especially when you're given an opportunity with an error made by the pitcher on a throw over the first base and board is a third base. You have to score on those chances. Chavez bouncing one to short. Toriaba was going, so they're unable to turn the double play. But there are two outs with a man in scoring position now. Chavez 0 for 3. Number five, second baseman, Ian The Angels have also gotten left hander Horatio Ramirez up. He's playing catch alongside Bobby Kazavon. Kinsler will come up now. Corey Albert second two outs. 0 for 3 tonight is Kinsler. A line out and a couple of fly ball outs. Dangerous hitter, but Jared has had the mindset right now. This is more likely be my last hitter. If I get through this inning, I got to go give everything I have right now. Just missed off the plate for ball one. Napoli with his 20th of the season to strike the seventh inning. His 50th run batted in. And now a seven game hitting streak. It's 2 and 0. Oh, Looked like Jared slipped on the. Or in the landing area, I should say. It's two balls, no strikes. Off speed, bounced over to third as Sturis comes in. High throw, pulls trouble off the bag, but he applies the tag. The inning comes to an end. But Texas gets on the board on the Napoli leadoff home run. It's one nothing Texas. The second baseman joined the Halos in 1964 and immediately formed one of baseball's best double play combinations with Jim Fergosi. The key to a good combo is the second baseman getting rid of the ball. And Bobby Knopf could get rid of the ball faster than anybody in the league. Knopf won three straight gold gloves for the Angels in the late 60s. Seventh inning stretch time here at the Big Eight. It's one nothing Texas. Mike Napoli with a solo home run to put the Rangers up. The Halos trying to avoid being swept at home in a four-game series for the first time ever by Texas. Colby Lewis back out on the mound. He'll be facing Mark Trumbo, Russell Brannion, Peter Borges. Five, six, and seven for the Halos. Trumbo. Has hit a fly ball to left and has struck out. Seven punch outs for Lewis tonight. One walk. And just three hits allowed. One ball, no strikes. Michael Young guarding the line at third base. 
and deep against Trumbo. Napoli's off the line at first. Trumbo do does have a big fly against Colby Lewis in his career. Certainly that straight fastball, if he gets a lot of the plate, it could be some damage done. One ball, one strike. Late on that pitch. Two balls and one strike. The Angels have gotten Scott Downs up in the bullpen. They'll be coming on in the eighth inning. Perhaps if things change. Otherwise, Bobby Kazavov might come on. Either way, it looks like Weaver's night is done after seven innings. One run. Two one. Swing and a miss. Two and two. Pretty good slider. And a fastball count. Bobby Lewis has done a good job with that. Not throwing the fastball in a good hitter's count. He's able to throw a cut fastball or a slider in those situations. Throwing fastball away and the 2 2 is fouled back. Abreu narrowly missing a home run in the sixth inning ended up going for a double but stranded in scoring position. The Angels 0 for 4 tonight with men in scoring position. 2 2. Trumbo hammers one down the line. This one's got a chance if it stays fair and it is foul. So Mark will head back to the plate and reset. Face another 2 2 pitch. Right down the line is hooking. Just went foul from just out in front enough on that pitch to be able to get him the pull it foul, Colby Lewis, but a fortunate break for him. And Trumbo got to get right back in, and we've seen him make some great adjustments in this series alone for Trumbo. Going back outside, that's off the plate, full count. 94th pitch of the night for Colby Lewis. 63 have been strikes. There's Brandon, the DH on deck. The Angels have not had their leadoff man on board. Trouble pulls this one past Michael Young. And you can change that as Trouble's thinking about going to second. He will stop and head back to first. Took a huge turn. And the leadoff man is on board to start to seven. It's still a great aggressive base running. That's what you want to see out of your hitter. Hit that ball well. Got it by Michael Young, who was guarding the line. Trumbo was taking the potential double. Able to read that in front, able to get back in time to save the first base. But again, that's what you want to see out of your runner going down the line, thinking in terms of a double. As we said, right before that pitch, nobody. As a leadoff man had reached against Colby Lewis, who started inning until now. Trumbo is there with a leadoff base hit. He's one for three on the night. Russell Brandon, the DH, is 0 for 1. He walked in the second, the only free pass issued by Lewis, and popped out his last time up. Swinging first pitch, fouls it off to the left. Yo one pitch. Brandon skies went out to shallow left. Here comes David Murphy. One out. Fans, the Angels take on the White Sox on Tuesday at 7.05. Fans in attendance will receive a rally monkey chia pit while supplies last. Purchase your tickets today at the Angels Stadium ticket office or online at angels.com. A couple hits already in the game against Colby Lewis. You got Michael Young playing in to try to take away the potential bunt once again. A lot of room down that left field line if he gets it by Michael Young. Breaking pitch caught the upper portion of the strike zone and it's 0 1. 
Base hit to left by Borges in the second inning. The bunt single in the fifth. Went to third on a pickoff attempt by Lewis off the glove of Napoli. The third base with one out, and the Angels could not cash in that run. So going to miss on the breaking ball. 0 oh and 2 now. If there's been one pitch that Lewis could go to in this game and be successful with it. It's been a slider today. Very sharp. Staying away from the middle of the strike zone with that pitch. Coming right back again with the slider. Lays off of it. One ball, two strikes. No action in the Rangers bullpen. Jumbo over at first with one out. Here's the one two. Or just chops it toward the hole at short. Andrews has it. The throw to second is in time. So there are two outs with the man at first. Wants to do baseball, it appears, before he faces Eric Ibor. Or just reaching on the fielder's choice, so a two for three now. And you think Peter Borges again might be thinking in terms of trying to steal a base. Eric Ibar, more of a singles line drive hitter, so much easier to be able to score from second. It's fair to hope that the ball gets in the gas, especially as deep as some of the outfielders are playing, in particular Nelson Cruz in right field. Fastball a little bit high, and it's one ball, no strikes. Ibar tonight has grounded a second. He struck out with Borges at third base in the fifth inning. Over two. And another change up he threw to him. Versus Eric has to stay back. He's drifting out in front on the all speed pitches. He's going with that pitch last time up. Curveball down and in. We'll go fastball here. Upstairs. Two balls and one strike. David Murphy very shallow and toward the foul line in left field. Andy Chavez playing eye bar the opposite way in center. Cruz is basically holding up the wall and right. I was going to say he's almost in the stands. Yeah. Guess that said no doubles to right field. Mm -hmm. Borges takes off the two one. Ibar swings through it. Borges is in scoring position with a stolen base. But Eric chasing a pitch that was up around his neck. You know you think in terms of protecting the base runner, but you don't have to on a pitch like that. It's an all-speed pitch and up. Very difficult pitch to be able to throw if you're a catcher. 16th stolen base for Borges. With two outs here in the seventh. Down one nothing. And Ibar with a two-ball, two-strike count. Yoshinori Tatiyama, the right-hander. The Angels have not faced in this series, loosening now. Alberto Cayaspa has come out to the on-deck circle. 2-2 pitch. Ibar takes that one down and in, a full count. Cayaspa would be batting for Jeff Mathis. He tried to slow curveball down and in. You wonder if he'll throw it again on 3-2. Different alignment now in the outfield with Borges in scoring position. Murphy still shallow in left field, but Chavez playing straight up. More to pull, actually, and shallow. Nelson Cruz certainly very shallow in right field. Torrealba out to have the conversation here as far as pitch selection. They got Ibar with that slow breaking pitch down and in in the fifth inning.
Lewis is ready. Glance back to Borges. Here's a 3 2. High bar takes that one down low, and it's a walk. Second base on balls issued by Colby Lewis. Mike Maddox is going to come out and pay a visit. And Alberto Cayaspo will come up to pinch hit for Jeff Mathis. Hey folks, on Saturday, the hit Christian Van Mercy Me will continue the postgame summer concert series presented by SRS Labs in association with Budweiser. Purchase your tickets today at the Angel Stadium ticket office or log on to angels.com slash concerts. Long conversation on the mound with Mike Maddox at the entire infield. If Lance Barksdale doesn't go out there and get him, Maddox will stay out there for a while. Yeah, they're fairly long meetings every time that Maddox goes out to the mound. So Chaos will pinch inning here for Mathis, who ended up going 0 for 2 with a couple of strikeouts. Well, the way the defense is aligned against Chiasco, particularly in the outfield, you would think they're going to go something away. The Angels have struggled in the pinch hitting category this year overall. Alberto one for six in these type of scenarios. Borges is standing at second. High bar at first. The fastball is down in the way. A great speed on the bases for the Angels. Gapper, all of a sudden, a good chance to take the lead. Here comes, nope, the spin move by Lewis. Checking in on Borges. Missed outside, two balls and no strikes. Andrews trying to keep Borges close to the bag at second. Ibar with a big lead at first. Napoli playing deep. Outside. 3 0. And it looks like Kobe Lewis may have run out of gas. He didn't look like he wanted to throw that change up anywhere near the strike uh -oh. zone. 110 pitches for Lewis. Tatayama is ready to go in the bullpen for Texas. Meister Stewart is the leadoff man. Is the guy on deck. Three zero. Caught the outside corner for a strike. Three and one. Not a bad idea if you're Kayaspo. Hasn't had a lot of success getting the green light. Three O's popped up a couple of times on that pitch. You're going to get the exact same pitch here. Three one as you would get. Three O. Now that you track that part of the plate. Better opportunity to get a base hit. Here comes the three one. Alberto pops it up. Left side of the infield, Elvis Andrews puts it away. The Angels leave two more men on base. Seven of the books, one nothing Texas.
Martin making tires that go the distance inspires what they roll into yours. Our thanks to the good folks at Goodyear for their great shots from the blimp here tonight. Take a look at our farmers insurance report card tonight. Well, Jerry, we were certainly did a fantastic job. Seven innings, this one earned run allowed. Colby Lewis, very good himself. Seven innings of shutout baseball. Angels missed some opportunities. 0 for 5 with runners in scoring position. Mike Napoli, the only run of the game, his 20th home run of the season at the left center field. Bobby Kazava has come into the game in place of Jared Weaver. And here in the eighth inning, he'll be facing Andrews, Hamilton, and Young. He'll be throwing to a new catcher as Bobby Wilson is behind the plate. Elvis Andrews tonight, three for three, two singles and a double. Sinker catches the inside corner for a strike. Casaval went two and two thirds Monday night against Texas. Garrett Richards was injured after 19 pitches. Bobby gave up a run on three hits, like one walk, and no strike. That's a nice job in that role. One ball, two strikes. A good spot on that fastball. A big thing for Bobby right now in, in a bigger role coming out of the bullpen. An opportunity to keep it right where it's at, down this one nothing. Break your pitch, grounded a short. Ibar has it, gets rid of it quickly, and Andrews is retired for the first time tonight. Out number one. Now it's time for a Land Rover performance. Jared Weaver. An outstanding effort. Great curveball. His fastball command has been outstanding tonight. Seven great innings. Fastball, two seam fastball inside, of course, fastball away. That's a five punch out going to seven innings of one run baseball. Hamilton at the plate. Looks at a strike on the outside corner. Hamilton 0 for 3 as he grounds this one to short. Ibar is there. Two outs. 41,123 on hand. Number 10. A good battle between Weaver and Colby Lewis. With Mike Napoli getting that solo home run against Jared Weaver, the seventh, the only scoring in this game, and the Angels just uh, unable to figure it out offensively. Michael Young at the play with two outs. Nobody on. Swinging first pitch. And a two and one. And this gets long. Thinking he's going to get a fastball. First pitch starts to bat through the zone. But Casaball, real nice breaking ball. Check swing. They asked for help. Agent Johnson says he did not kill. One ball, one strike. Mark Lowe's up and loosening. One one pitch is a strike and it's one and two. Some wrong with uh, Mike Adams. He hasn't pitched in this series at all. We Haro's pitched a couple of times. So is Feliz. You would think that he's supposedly they brought him over for the eighth inning guy. Breaking pitch is in the dirt. Two balls, two strikes. There he is, just hanging out. Usually be the guy that would be going to to set up for Naftali Feliz. Unless he's the guy that's going to go tonight. If Maybe Feliz the, the night off. Could be. 2-2 Two -two pitch. Way outside, a full count. Nelson Cruz on deck. And they say that Adams is potentially the closer. Going next year, if they want the option of moving or trying to move Feliz into the starting rotation.
three two pitch. That's down low. He lost him. A two out walk puts a man on for Nelson Cruz. In the bottom of the eighth inning, the Angels have the top of their order as Juris Kendrick and Wells do. Uh, Cruz did not 0 for 3 with a couple of strikeouts. Takes a fastball just below the knees for ball one. One opportunity to have a 1 2 3 inning and a two out walk. Bobby unable to find the strike zone all of a sudden after getting ahead of Young with two outs. Pulling off his pitches off the outside corner. And he put a dangerous hitter up in a good hitter's count. Two and one. Good location on that fastball. And it's three balls in a strike. Mike Napoli on deck who has big swing of the ball game so far the home run in the seventh inning. Oh, he jammed him floats it down the line that is just foul. Good pitch in on the hands. Well that baseball had some late movement on it, it was yeah, it did. Wanted to be a fastball away you know, running in on his hands. Michael Young will be off with the pitch at first base with two outs and a full count here on Cruz. Three two foul tip hung on to by Wilson that will end the inning we head to the bottom of the eighth Texas on top one to nothing. Thousand ATMs nationwide and more on the way. Take a step forward and chase what matters by Chrysler. Visit us at Chrysler.com or see your local dealer today. And by 76 Gasoline. We're on the driver's side. Great shot from the Goodyear Blimp once again. Our thanks to them for coming out to the Big A. And 
see if the Angels can rally here in the bottom of the eighth inning, down by the score of one to nothing. Mark Lowe comes into the game here to pitch the eighth inning. He'll be facing his stewards, Kendrick and Wells. Numbers on the season, 42nd game for Lowe. He did pitch Monday, one scoreless inning of relief. Two and two record and a 3.22 ERA. Yeah, above average power fastball, 92 to 97 range slider changeup. Meister Asturias is 0 for 3. Strike out, a pop-up, and a fly ball to center. Takes a fastball for a strike. Kobe Lewis tonight, 7 innings. 7 strikeouts, 2 walks, 4 hits allowed. In line for his 12th win, unless the Angels have other ideas here in the 8th or 9th innings. Meister fouls this one off the left, and it's 0 and 2. See the life of the fastball from Mark Lowe who came over with Cliff Lee last year from the Seattle Mariners. A big trade that Texas made. At that point was still kind of getting back from the arm injury that he had. Mysterious goes down swinging for round number one. Good pitch here. Fastball running away after a fastball that was elevated at 98 miles an hour. Sinks that one down and away. Howie Kendrick is 0 for 3. Lowe had some elbow surgery back in 07, some back surgery. Missing some time last year. That's how he swings through that one. It's quickly 0 and 2. The guy was a fifth round pick by Seattle back in 2004. One ball, two strikes. I think after that 99 mile an hour fastball, he may come back with his slider once again. Ground ball to short. Elvis Andrews is there. Two outs. Hey, folks, you can take the Angels with you this season by subscribing to MLB.tv today to see every Angels game live or on demand on your computer as well as your favorite devices. Visit Angels.com to order and or to get more details. MLB.tv baseball everywhere. Two outs and nobody on for Vernon Wells. First plate appearance of the night for Vernon. Defensive replacement in the seventh inning. Took over for Bobby Abreu, who finished tonight one for three. Had a double in the sixth inning. Wells hitting 201, 17 home runs, 46 runs batted in. The slider catches the outside corner. It's no balls in a strike. A one pitch, fastball catches the outside corner. 0 and 2. Toward Walden, Horatio Ramirez playing catch. Vernon goes down swinging. And the Angels go down in order here in the eighth. Eight complete Texas still on top one and nothing.
Out there for his second inning of action. He'll be facing Napoli, Murphy, and Tori Alba here in the ninth. Bobby issuing a walk with two outs in the eighth inning, but leaving that man stranded. Napoli one for three, the solo home run. The difference in this ball game that came leading off the seventh, his 20th home run of the year. He takes that fastball down and in. Halos in jeopardy of falling to eight games back in the American League West. Uphill battle for sure. Uphill battle at seven games back. No question. Especially when you're you're struggling to make good consistent contact at the plate, especially with guys in scoring position. That's one and two. Two balls, two strikes. It appears as if just as we are kind of trying to figure out what they were planning on doing, Adams is up. We're looking to close things out for Texas in the ninth. <laughs> Napoli takes a called strike three. Down goes Napoli for the first down. Bobby Casabell has a great moving fastball that started off the plate and catches the outside corner. 93 with movement. Ground ball toward the middle. Ibar can't get it. It's a one out base hit for David Murphy. His first hit of the night. Puts a man on for Texas here in the ninth inning. For your Vittori Alba. Certainly going to see some movement now. It looks like Gentry is going to come in and pinch run for Murphy. Gentry with very good speed. Your attention, please, one of the first base of 23, Greg Gentry. Gentry with 13 stolen bases on the season has not been caught yet. Tori Alba tonight, one for two. A ground ball to short, a single, and a walk. Bobby missing upstairs. One ball, no strikes. Toriyama breaks his bat, loops one out to left field. Here comes Vernon Wells. He'll make the catch. Two outs. Andy Chavez will come to the plate. In the bottom of the ninth inning, Tory Hunter, Mark Trumbull, Russell Brandon to schedule three guys. A lot of power. That's what you want. With Andy Chavez coming to the plate, the left-hand hitting center fielder. Looks like Bobby's going to give the ball to Mike. And so she's going to go out to Horatio Ramirez, a left-hander. We've got ourselves a pitching change here in the top of the ninth. The Angels down one to nothing.
Ramirez had some troubles against Chavez himself, but again, he got to work that fastball. He's been pretty good as far as getting his breaking ball over it, but his fastball has been the pitch he's had troubles with since coming up from AAA. Horatio was recalled after being sent down before the Angels went to Toronto because of the injury to Garrett Richards. Went two thirds of an inning on Tuesday and allowed a hit. The rest of the heroes trying to get the final out here in the ninth inning. With Craig Gentry at first base, the pinch runner. Four for eight with a home run. Ramirez versus Chavez. Chavez fouls that one at the plate. It's a piece of Bobby Wilson. No balls in a strike. We got him right almost on the hand. And Conger available. He called today from AAA as Tyler Chatwood was sent down to Salt Lake City. No balls and a strike on Chavez. Gentry over at first. 0 oh 2. Good fastball, good location. Gentry as of yet hasn't shown any signs of taking off towards second base, but you never know with his speed. Especially 0 2, he may guess that Ramirez is going to throw a breaking pitch. No balls, two strikes. And they picked him off. Trumbull fires to second base, and he, his poor throw allows Gentry to reach second. He's going to his own inside the bag, which makes it a more difficult throw for a right handed first baseman to throw that ball. Eric Ibar at second base. Now the focus finally back to the hitter. It's still no balls, two strikes. The pitch. Had to get him to chase the breaking ball. One ball, two strikes. Top of the order, Ian Kinsler on deck. Outfield playing shallow, especially Wells in left field. The one two outside, two balls, two strikes. Ramirez is trying to keep this a one nothing deficit as the Angels at the heart of their order coming up at the bottom of the ninth inning. 2-2 pitch. Chavez strikes out, swinging. The inning comes to an end. We head to the bottom of the ninth. Corey Hunter, Mark Trouble, Russell Brannion do up for the Halos against Mike Adams. Down one nothing.
Mike Adams takes over here from Mark Lowe. He has one save already with Texas this year. Acquired on the July 31st non waiver trade deadline. 56 games to see his overall numbers with Texas. This will be his ninth game. One and one mark and a 1.08 earned run average. He had a 113 mark while with San Diego earlier this year. Gentry stays in the game. He's in center and that moves Andy Chavez over to left. Mike Adams, the guy that not overpowering with the fastball, but sinks the fastball extremely well. Good slider. Very deceptive delivery also. Torrey Hunter hitless tonight. 0 for 3. Needs a base knock to extend his hitting streak to 15 games. And more importantly, to give the Angels a base runner representing the tying run here in the ninth. Mark Lowe, by the way, went one inning and struck out two batters. He looked sharp. He pitched the eighth inning. Fastball is upstairs. It's one ball, no strikes. Adams originally in the Milwaukee Brewers system. Thirty three years of age. Here's the one oh. Tory swings lines it out to the alley and right center field a base hit. Gentry over to cut it off. Tory stays at first. He extends his hitting streak to 16 games. And the tying run is on board. Oh, the big fly right here now from Mark Trumbo. And a good adjustment for Tory. Adams is the guy that's going to stay down in the strike zone often. A lot of fastballs, a lot of sliders away. Went with the pitch, the right center field. Gentry did a nice job of cutting off that baseball. Otherwise, it would have been a leadoff double. The Angels need to capitalize. They were down by a run last night of the night that it got their leadoff man on board and left that potential tying run at third base. Mark Trumbo was the guy that was stranded at third. He steps up here. One for three, had a base hit in the seventh inning. Quick throw to first, Torrey back in. Russell Brannion on deck. The outfield very deep all the way around for Texas. First pitch, breaking ball backed up and it missed in off the plate. And it's one ball, no strikes. Pitch. Swinging a chopper foul, chasing the breaking ball. Count even now, one ball, one strike. And he's going to try to stay down in the strike zone if he can against Mark Trumbo. Mark's got real good power, the right center field, and that pitch down and away, though. If Tali Feliz, the closer for Texas, went one inning last night. Gave up a hit. He pitched one third of an inning through three pitches two nights ago. So Mike Adams getting called upon here by Ron Washington. Torrey gets back to the bag. Hunter with a leadoff single to start this ninth inning, extending his hitting streak to 16 games. Michael Young really guarding the line at third base. Playing deep against Trumbo. Napoli holding Hunter at first. And time is called. A run, seven hits, one error, eight left on for Texas. No runs, five hits, no errors. Six left on for the Halos. A loss, and the Angels are eight games back. A win, and the Angels six back. There's still six left to play against Texas. 1-1. One, one. Breaky pitch, hammered down the line. This one's got a chance. 
Boy, what a job by Mark Trumbo. Boy, just made, just missed one earlier right down the line. This time he's able to get a backup breaking ball in her half of the plate. And no doubt or a rocket right down the left field line. This is we'd hope. Base hit by Torrey Hunter. Then the big fly by the big fellow. Home run number 23 for Mark Trumbo. What a job. The Halo salvage the finale of this four-game series. Now six-pack of the Texas Rangers, the final two to one. Stick around. Angel Live is coming up next with an interview with the game-winning home run guy, Mark Trumbo.